All right, good evening, YouTube. For a short intro for this video, I would like you all to appreciate this little studio setup that I have going on here. Cheap tripod that has an aluminum tube, mainly electrically taped into it. And inside this aluminum tube, there's another aluminum tube. To this aluminum tube, I'll be zip tying my phone to. So hopefully if everything goes well and this thing doesn't fall apart and break my computer and kill me, we'll have a nice from above look. All right, now here we are at the studio and I know the lighting still isn't the best and I am genuinely afraid of what I'm gonna come up for the future videos. All right, well, let's get to the point. Now in here is an electrical box. Now this houses all the electrical components that are used for transmitting power and controlling the robot arm. All right, now the first thing you'll probably notice here is my lack of measuring skills. Um, this power supply was originally meant to be sideways, but now it has to be flipped up to make room for all the other components in here. Therefore, I have to make a, I've had to make a cutout for the power supply, so it kind of sticks out from the top of this box. The other thing that we'll see here is the emergency stop button right here. So this is wired to the live um, cable coming from the power block and going into the power supply. So hitting this will actually cut the power of, of everything inside here. Now here on the top right there is an IEC connector. So that just takes a regular 3-pin power cable. Now I'm lucky, lucky enough to have one of them grow underneath my table. So these are the ones that I'm talking about. And the power is being fed from here through the emergency stop into the power supply. All right, now this is a 12 volt, 20 amp power supply. So in theory, it should give us 240 watts, but it's a cheap LED power supply. So who knows what it actually gives out. Now from this power supply, uh, the 12 volt cables go into two separate places. So one pair goes to the RAMS board up here uh, for input power to the separate drivers that are on the RAMS board. And there's another line going to the TB6600 stepper driver up here. All right, now the reason that this, <coughs> reason that this looks a little funny and there's a single stepper driver here is the fact that on the RAMS board there are five stepper driver slots and these slots accept um, your regular small stepper drivers such as A4988 or DRV8825. With this build, I'm using 8825s. The stepper motors 2 to 6 are driven with these DRV drivers that are on the RAMS board, and the first motor, which is the rotational motor, so J1, that is driven with this TB6600. All right, so the wiring in here, thanks to the RAMS board, is rather simple. So all these stepper motors on the shield are wired through the shield and then there are actually only three cables going from the Arduino through the ramp shield to the TB6600. And now all these cables up here are the actual power lines that are going out to the motors. So five of these cables will be coming from the ramps board, from the stepper drivers and then there are these four wires coming from the TB6600 that are wired for J1. Now, if we look at this box from its side, in here, there is a USB connector. So this basically just um, allows you to block a USB-B connector to the outside of the box, and then it's routed to the Arduino on the inside. Underneath it, there is a ethernet cable connector. And this ethernet cable is used for the incoming signals from the limit switches, as well as the out for a single servo motor that could be used for a gripper. So this is just for delivering single cables. And then here at the bottom, we have a DC power block. This power block is actually delivering five volts, providing power for all the limit switches. Of the servo motors, five volts will also be taken from this DC plug. On the other side of this fancy little ventilation holes that I printed, are actually six GX16 connectors. Earlier I was trying to do everything through a 50 pin, single 50 pin connector. It turned out to be a bad idea.
Back to the inside of the box. As I said, there is a 5 volt pass through for the servo power and the limit switches and that's been done through a 12 volt to 5 volt um, DC converter in here and that's been wired from the ramps boards D9 slot so it can actually be turned on and off from the Arduino code. Now right next to this DC converter on the D8 port there is a 12 volt fan connected to it so this is a I believe it's a 60 millimeter fan just a regular PC case fan that I had laying around and well I wired it to the D8 port so now you can actually have some air moving through and cooling the stepper drivers. Alright now we've come off the sketchy studio setup and we are back on the solid ground. Now what we got here is the robot arm, the actual physical one that I printed on A3 size. I've already gone through this arm on SOLIDWORKS and showed its functions but in here I'd like to show a couple of things that are not on the model or that I've modified afterwards. Something that wasn't on the SOLIDWORKS model is this J1 limit switch down here and this limit switch is just been screwed to the side of the base and here on the 100 tooth pulley that's rot rotating this whole arm there's a small cutout and in there is a little lid, um, it's been fastened in there with a the screw and that little part is actually the one that's pushing the limit switch. Alright now while we're at it here's the J2 limit switch and while this first arm rotates back far enough it'll hit the limit switch. Same thing with the J3 limit switch up here. And one other change that I had to do from the model was to not actually hard mount this motor up here but to include small silicone washers on both sides of the bolts. So in between the motor and the print and in between the print and the bolt head. Now the reason for this is the J5 axle coupling connecting the stepper motor to the 5mm axle. So I machined the part myself on a lathe and I definitely don't think that the problem is my machining skills so I'm thinking there might have been something wrong with the lathe, maybe something was loose but anyway the part turned out to be a little wombly. Now what that does is it causes the axle to rotate a little eccentric. These silicone washers right here allow the motor to flex just a little bit when the axle is rotating. Now I tried it out and it works well, might not be the prettiest solution but Hey, it's whatever. Alright, now here on the end of the video I wanted to do a short demo where I'm gonna run all the functional axes, so from J1 to J5 and show you the movements of the robot. back to zero. Alright, so thank you for watching this video and if you're interested in seeing how this arm actually functions and how it works, I made a previous video where I went over the SOLIDWORKS model of the arm explaining how all the axes work and what does everything. So if you haven't seen that one already, please check it out and I'll hope to see you in the next video. Cheers!